Hey guys, welcome back to The Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin, and today in the shop we're going to be making a magic toy box for Devin's daughter. Now the magic part about this is that it's going to have a fun kind of push button auto opening lid with also a soft closure so it doesn't smash your fingers. It'll also have a secret compartment that's hidden underneath of a false floor that we'll be able to access from the front. I'm going to try to do this all out of a single sheet of plywood, and I have my notes on how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to transfer that over now to a cut sheet, and then we'll take it outside and cut what we need. For the cut sheet, I'm doing 24 by 32 for the back of the box. Then both sides are going to be 18 by 24. That extra space on the sides gives you the full height so that way you can cut a decorative shape out of the sides. The top, which is going to be the lid of the box, is going to be 18 by 32. The front of the box is 17 by 32 because that shorter height there will give uh, the height of the full toy box, the 18 inches that I want when I'm finished. Then the bottom and the false bottom will both be 16 by 32 inches. It also leaves us with a space of 25 by 32 inches, that'll be the extra, and that I'll use for the trim on the front, as well as any mounting spots for the inside of the box. Now I have all of my lines marked out on my plywood, but before I cut this, I'm gonna label everything because I don't wanna to have to go back and try to measure them and figure out which ones are 16, which ones are 17, which ones are 18. I'm just gonna mark everything the same way I have it on my cut sheet. Now that I have all my pieces cut, I'm gonna trace out one of my sides on this paper, and we'll come up with a template to be able to do the armrest in the side. Then I'm going to do one large, long radius curve along the top of the back. I want it to try to drop down an inch on both sides. So we're gonna set up a fun way to set that. This is the end of each of the handle handles, which will be on each side of the toy box. You guys can see I actually drew a second pattern here, and that's because I realized that the back is coming down an inch, that long curve is coming down an inch, so to meet up with the sides it has to be lower. There's my secondary one.
Right side. Pocket holes we'll go there. I can do the false bottom first. The pocket holes underneath, so you can't see them. Pocket holes will go there in the front, and then the bottom on the bottom. Everything's looking pretty good, uh, pretty clean together. There are a few little gaps here and there because just of the plywood warping a little bit, but uh, that'll all pull together when I screw it together. Before I do that though, I need to put in my false bottom drawer hole. So we're gonna have a flip down piece of trim in the front so you can access this false bottom. Right now, this is actually the second bottom. It's gonna be up to about here, and we're gonna have that three and a half to four inches inside the front. So I need to cut that out of the front piece. Five inches, five inches, okay. And I marked on the inside of the sides in the back where I want that false bottom to sit, the bottom of it. So I have that line all the way around. So what I'll do is I'll take the sides off now, I'll glue and screw the false bottom into the back, and then I'll do the sides. Then I'll do the front, so I can screw in the false bottom, and then I'll do the actual bottom.
take a quick break and I'll switch over to a different skill and I'll tell you a little bit about our sponsor today, Skillshare. Now, a really awesome video I watched recently on Skillshare was Edinburgh Watercolor Painting by Marco Bucci and he does an awesome job of talking over his work. He shows you what he's doing and he's talking about how he's working and just seeing the mind of an artist like that is really important because you see how he's working with the constraints around him. Now, watercolor painting is a really great version of that because there are so many constraints within what we're doing. You have a rectangle you have to deal with and you're responding to the landscape. Everything works really quickly and that relates directly to working in the shop and working within constraints and I think that type of thing when you have a certain amount of tools and supplies and you have to make those work that's a really important skill to build and when you learn new skills and other type of arts and things that really helps you to uh, figure out ways to make your work better and work within the constraints that you have and I think that's really important for all makers. Have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start from photography and illustration, woodworking, metalworking, graphic design, freelancing, and more. You can find classes that will match your goals and interests. Skillshare benefits are ad-free, so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills. There are new premium classes launched each week, so there's always something new to discover. And the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get a free one-month trial to Skillshare. Thanks again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. setting my table saw up to cut six inches. I'm doing that because I'm gonna cut two pieces of trim, one for the top of the face and one for the bottom of the face of the toy box. I'm using half inch instead of three quarter because my sides overlap only just a little bit over a half inch. So that'll sit on the top and bottom. That bottom one will be the false face, which will fold down and open up that kind of secret space underneath. So we've run into a little bit of an issue and we're trying to problem solve. Now, normally with a um, a toy box like this, you would use a lay flat hinge like this, right? So that way it would go in here, you'd have two of them and you'd see the hinge part here. Now that's not horrible, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't assist the lid to open and we want the lid to open on its own when you hit the button. And that's why we have these spring hinges. Now the problem with this spring hinge is that it's designed to sit like this and then open up, which means it has to have a gap of basically the thickness of the top to be able to open up all the way. So then we're dealing with a gap. Now we can use this, but it doesn't have the spring, so we'd have to add more hardware inside. And we're just trying to figure out the issue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this to a scrap piece of wood, see how it works, see how it fits, and try to problem solve from there. That's a little higher. So I need to remove some material here so it comes down. So when it's like this, it's there, which is like that.
Well, you can see that we had to put this project on hold for a little bit. Uh, we had some other stuff we were working on. The last thing we did on this was we put in the hinges with the springs, and that was supposed to be able to lift this lid up on its own. Well, you can see that they're not strong enough to do that. So I got some gas pistons. We're going to put those on and see if that does the trick. that in, pop this in, and here's our moment of truth. Now, let's see. Hey, nice. Yeah, that's perfect. That's slow open, that's what we're looking for. It doesn't fall down back on your fingers for little kids. If it does, it only falls from there. Even if you like close it fast, it's still not going to hurt you. That's great. Well, I think we're going to give up on the magic button idea. Now, what we want to do is put a button here, which would uh, push on that and open a latch, which would open this whole thing up and it would push up on it and it would open up magically. Now that's cool, but what we run into is that we have this kind of six inches or so of play that doesn't have any spring to it. So while this works really nicely, you walk over and you push up. That's beautiful. And we love this opening now. It doesn't create the spring pressure up. We could probably add some more springs in the back and there's a bunch of stuff I'm sure we could do but we're running out of time because now we're six months out and Devin's daughter needs her toy box so if you can think of a good solution or something quick that might work for this and give us that like that spring right from the beginning which would open it all the way up on its own let us know down in the comments below and maybe we'll come back and revisit this in a future video and put in a magic button so we're going to work on creating this door which will be held on by magnets and just have pin hinges on the side so it can open and close and hide that little compartment I guess it won't just fall down on its own. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Maybe it's holding. It's kind of anticlimactic. I thought it would be a, a more positive hold. So we'll add one more in the middle. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that actually wants to pull it that last little bit. That's exactly what we want. That positive grab. It's not loose anymore. That's really nice. Nice slow open top that's not going to just fall down on your fingers. Still rubbing just a little bit. We'll take care of that. And this is just working great. Devin's gonna take this home and he's gonna finish sand everything and make sure nothing's rubbing and he's gonna paint it all so it looks beautiful. So until then, thank you guys all so much for watching. Please make sure you don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.